Well, hey guys, Captain Dave Schneider, it's a guide's life. Here we are. My first guide trip back in Florida, Lake Okeechobee. Well, but you know that. Listen, I got a couple dudes I want to introduce to you. Uh, these guys, uh, their home lake is Table Rock, right? I guess yep. I'd say yep. home lake is yep. Table Rock. They live in the Branson, Missouri area. Um, this is this is uh, Evan back here behind me, right? Say hey, Evan. Hey. <laughs> Evan. <laughs> say hey, Evan. Hey, Evan. <laughs> Let's see if his older brother gets it. All right, say hey, Cole. Hey, Cole. See, I, see I, I should have started with Cole. Yeah, you should. Uh, I'm just teasing you. That, that's a little thing I do uh, on my vlog. You'll see that. You can see they've never seen my videos, right? Oh, you can yeah. see that, right? Sad. Anyway, listen, we, we're, we're down here in Harney Pond. I tournament fished yesterday. Didn't show you a lot of video on that because, you know, quite frankly, eight pounds is not all that exciting. Uh, but uh, but it, didn't, it didn't come without some, some excitement. And, of course, I made fun of John Tavano all day long. So I'll, I'm going to get you some of that video as well, hooked up to this. But, guys, we're excited. Uh, we, Evan's already scored a, a fish. He got one on a waker bait uh, probably about 10 minutes in here before I even got the cameras going. Um, and uh, and we're gonna we've got we're gonna we're gonna work this we're gonna work this as long as the weather permits and uh, if the fish keep biting we may stay in Harney Pond all day uh, but we got eight hours of fun coming at you Captain Dave Schneider we'll be back. Great toad I wish I'd been recording man I'm so stupid that's actually not that's not a bad fish right here uh, and you know what else too I, what I and we'll point this out later on you're gonna see this this has got a white belly and guys I talk all the time about resident and and lake fish this is a lake fish this is not a fish that lives in shallow grass. So that's good. That's what we're hoping to see. Good fish, man. I mean, pound and, pound and a half. Mm -hmm. Good job. Well, we're in the fish areas now. Here, here's, here's another tip for you guys. Listen, and I always do this. Anytime I catch a fish, and I don't care where it Wait is, I put a fish mark. And I'm going to tell you something. You're creating, you're creating data. You understand that? Yeah, yeah. You're creating something that later on you'll look back on and you'll see a pattern of where you're catching, actually catching the fish. Okay. And what's neat about that is, is as you investigate areas, as you fish areas and like, you know, over and over again, you start to realize you're catching fish in the same areas. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and then you start to realize, oh, you know, there's just a little bit of change here. There's a mm -hmm. little bit of this here, a little bit of that there. And that's why that's happening. So it's like part one of a data collection uh, uh, routine. And, uh, and that's, that's it's really important to do that you know we're pre-fishing or something mm -hmm. we'll put an american flag oh my gosh that was a good fish Did you no, get him no I didn't. oh that was a good fish that bro good one, yeah that was a better fish right there get right at him a lot of times they'll give us two shots at him i'm not stealing coal you better hurry come on baby hit it hit it hit it There he is. Oh, you got him? No. Nope. Oh, let it, I was gonna let him. No, eat I'm not it. even sure that was the same fish. It might not have been. I was gonna let him eat it. Boy, he's oh, mine. he is. Got him. He's got him. Got him. He's got him. Oh, yeah. that's a good fish. That's a good, one, Evan. good fish, Evan. <laughs> I just put us on spot lock here too. So. Hey, Cole, thanks for letting me have your fish. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, he's such a nice boy. Look at this fish, man. That's a nice bass, guys. That's a nice Okeechobee bass. We'll, we're gonna Instagram that fish right there. Look at you, bub. That, that fish is that fish is two and three quarters pounds, man. Let's get a picture of that real quick here. There he is. There he is. There he is. How's he feel, Bubba? Get your rod up. Now we want to fight with our rod up here. There you okay. go. It don't feel up big. It's in grass. Uh, keep, him keep him coming. Keep him coming. Keep him coming. We'll go after him. Get yeah, keep coming. Well, that's, that's you got. That's when you put your rod tip down. That's where they go. <laughs> that's my gift for listening to you, Cole. Oh, there you go. Good fish, man. This is a, this is a nice bass. Good. Mm. There you go. Yeah, we don't put our rods down here. Okay. All right, guys. Listen, uh, we're about halfway through our day. We got four fish in the boat. Not from a lack of trying. Uh, my my boys here have been actually actually been hitting it pretty good. Uh, it's just been it's it's hey, it's a, it's an Okeechobee day. You know, it's a it's a hot summer day, and uh, and we we fished a variety of things. We we fished uh, outside edges of hydrilla and sparse hydrilla. We fished on top of hydrilla. We've uh, fished some pads and things like that. We had a couple of bites. You had a couple of bites flipping. Yeah. That was encouraging, but it just they they weren't picking it up and holding on to it. Um, could have even been bluegill, possibly. Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't. I didn't. I wasn't a thing. But uh, anyway, we're gonna head over to Clouston. We're gonna we're gonna gotta get back to Clouston either way. Um, the wind's really howling at this point, and that 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 can be a good thing. I, I, I've got some fish hanging on the edges of the spoil islands. We're gonna throw some square bills out there, I think, and, and see if we can hook a nice fish doing that. And uh, we might even all, we might even do some flipping up near Uncle Joe's cut as well. So anyway, Captain Dave, giving you an update. We're headed to Clewiston. Say hey, fellas. Hey. hey.
You're not very enthusiastic. Fellas. Say hey fellas. Hey fellas. Hey fellas. Well he just you know what you know what the problem is? He doesn't like to be told what to do. That's what it is. Yeah. You know that what it is? A little rebellion. That's what it is. Isn't it? I think I think he's a rebellious little little bugger. You know? Of course you know he's at that age. You know, eleven, right? <laughs> I think it's ten. Ouch! Nah, he's fifteen. Nah, I'm just teasing. Alright man, Evan, you ready? I four. What are you twenty four? I four. I four. Uh, oh, I four. Uh, that's the highway that goes up near our land. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Hey guys, Captain Dave Schneider, It's a Guide's Life. Uh, I wanted to put a little bit of a head on the video with Evan and Corey. Uh, we, had, we had a really good time. These two young men are outstanding fishermen and, and uh, they had a really good attitude. But you know, we only boated four bass. And you know, everybody, everybody that comes to Okeechobee has got a dream. They got the Okeechobee dream and you know, it's kind of my job to kind of make that dream happen. Gosh dang it man, it just doesn't always. Uh, but they're, they're, these two young men are just absolutely stand up guys. Now I will say this: we did we did do a lot of different things, and and uh, and they were real complimentary. They were very kind to me uh, about the fact that we didn't really catch a, a big fish, uh, or or even good numbers for that matter. But but it was strictly artificials, and you know, guys, you know, I could make the excuses. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we had probably uh, let's see one, two, well, we boated four, three, and seven. We probably had probably 17 bites uh, all day, um, and, but but you know, half of those bites were were flipping and punching mats, which these two boys had never done. And and what was really cool about it was, you could watch. I, I mean, I could actually watch their progression in the pitching and the flipping, the pitching and the flipping. And I was really able to. I was really able to convey a lot of good and really good information to those fellas as they went through that process. And after we, after about an hour, an hour and a half, I I said to them, I said, guys, I can see the difference in your pitching and flipping right now, and, and how much better you're handling your equipment and you're understanding where the thing goes and they got they got a, uh, they got a bunch of bites <laughs> uh, but you guys if you haven't done that a lot you it is not an easy thing to do uh john and i went seven for ten in the tournament uh punching mats uh and and you know that's and that was actually pretty good um but anyway uh one of the things that really stunned me was they didn't know what snelling was for flipping and it's like oh my gosh and so you know it occurred to me if they don't know what snelling is then the boys in there, a lot of the guys that they fish with may not know it either. And I thought, you know, I, I did a snell thing a long time ago and it got a lot of hits. Um, I'm going to do another a real quick snell tying uh, lesson right now. And I'll put it in the title as well. But I, I want you to see this one more time. For those of you who haven't seen it, I've got a lot more subscribers now than I did last time I did this. So I want you to see this. If you're not snelling in, during flipping or if you're not snelling anytime you've got a straight chain hooked, you're making a big mistake. So here we go. All right. Uh, I, I want you to. I, first of all, I've, I've got uh, I've got my large. I've got a large uh, straight shank trocar flipping hook. I've got an eagle claw one ounce weight. Now I, I, we were actually flipping. We we were actually flipping with uh, with a two and a quarter ounce weights. Uh, but uh, but and even then there were times when there were times when that wasn't enough. Uh, but anyway, fish don't care how big the weight is. The only thing that matters is that they see the bait. And so you got to use a big enough bait to get it in. But here's the deal. First of all, you always start your snell process, and I didn't show these last time, and I'm showing them this time. You got to have some kind of a, a weight stopper. These are called stop heads by Jethro Bates. I buy these at the marina. That's why I have them. That's why I use them. They are also, guys, they're also the right ones. And what I mean by that is there's a, there's a several different kinds. These these are the these are the right kind of wire. Um, they're, they're, they've got nice big loops on top. They're easy to get your they're easy to feed your line through and pull on. And I also like that they're the same shape on both ends. I don't like the ones that are that are uh, funneled on one end or, or whatever. I, these are the ones I like. So uh, these are the ones I use. They're, it's probably $15, $14, $15 for this, but it's got a bunch of them in it, 90 of them in it. Uh, so, so you start, of course, you start with your, uh, your stopper on here. And there we go. You slide your, you slide your line through it, grab a hole. If you've never done this before, and you just pull on the wire until it pulls the stopper on, just like that. And then you just move it up the line. Now, I painted this line with uh, um, 
with some black paint because I wanted to be able to see the line really good while I do this, but it also makes it really hard to get the bobber stopper on there. There it is. Okay, here we go. Uh, then you'd put, I'm not going to go through the process of putting the weight on because it's got a small hole and, I, and this is 80 pound braid. I want to tie them. I want to tie the knot. So here's the key thing. You take your hook and you start with the hook, the, the bend of the hook up. And that is paramount because you got to go down in this direction when you snell. If you go the other way, it's going to work the wrong way. It's not going to work the way God intended, so to speak. Um, it'll work just the opposite way. So you're going to punch it through here like this. I'm going to rotate it over. I'm going to pull the line. I'm going to pull a big stretch of line about like this. That's my working tag end here. I'm going to let it go and I'm going to grab the hook right there, just like this. Pull this out here. Here's Again, there's my stopper here. I'm going to pull this out. And now I'm going to, I'm going to take it and pull the line this way. And I'm, by doing that, I'm creating a loop here. And I'm just going to start wrapping in front of the keeper. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Standard six to ten is what you want. <laughs> I'm going to go seven or eight there. Now, here's the key thing, too. It doesn't matter which way I go here, whether I go this way or this way. It doesn't matter. So don't get hung up on that. Just push it through the loop and grab a hold of the line, which is what I've done here. Now you're going to just very slowly and very carefully, you're going to pull this thing down past the keeper. Once you've got it past the keeper and it's down in this area here, you're going to cinch this baby as tight as you can. Just like that. Now I'm going to pull once on this end here and I'm going to pull it as hard as I can. I'm going to pull on both just like that. I'll pull one more time to pull the whole rig up towards, you can see how it kind of seats right here towards the end of the, the eye of the hook. It's a welded hook eye. That's why choke car hooks are so nice. The line's not coming out of it. And that is a snelled hook. Now, the reason that's so important, and I'm stupid because I should have put the, the, the weight on here, but the reason that's so important is when the weight pulls down on it, and you can still see it on my fingers. When the weight pulls down on it, it flips the hook up. All right, can you see that? I'm going to do it up here too. When the weight pulls down on it, guys, it flips the hook up. And that is why it's so important. And that's why you want to snell tie your hooks. It's going to punch this big hook into the roof of that fish's mouth. It just by virtue of the fact that the way this is tied in here, it's going to kick the hook. And that kick in the hook is going to mean more hookups for you. It absolutely is legit. It's also a great knot because it doesn't wear on your line. It doesn't do any negative things to your line. It's 100% knot, knot strength on your, on your knot. It keeps your line at 100%. And, uh, and that's it. That's the snell, guys. I hope that helps. If you haven't seen this, if you're not using the Snell, uh, you need to be. <laughs> Captain Dave Schneider, it's a guy's life. Uh, listen, I, I got a guide trip in the morning. Um, we'll get out and hopefully we can beat the rain and get out there and catch some bass tomorrow. Well, thanks, thanks for watching this. Bye.